I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth today. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about believing in Jesus, and I've been sharing lots of things uh, that the Spirit of God is laying in our heart. Now, every topic we take up, uh, we try to get to every depth that we can get to as the Spirit of God inspires so that you will be blessed. Now, I believe so much on this broadcast that the Spirit of God is hearing your cry and using this broadcast to give response to that cry. So I know burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, you know where our text is from? Our text is from Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. That's the last chapter of the book of Brother Mark. Praise God. You know, Brother Mark was the one whom you remember the first missionary journey of Apostle Paul and Barnabas. And they, they left with John Mark. And at some point, when they wanted to go, at some point, John Mark left them on that journey because he, he got tired of their whole travel. <laughs> He's going to say, look, I want to go home. I'm like, okay, go home. So the next time they were to set out, Mark said, oh, I would love to come. And now because Barnabas, and I see that's the thing about the scriptures. If you don't understand the background story, you won't really appreciate uh, the things that, that happened. You won't even understand. Now I know some people are, more focused on what they call doctrine and then and then you see when you hear people speak sometimes now this is not to to run anyone down this is not to put but then you see i've been in this thing for many years not just uh, doing bible study for many years leaving this word for many years and if you've lived this word for many years you would have discovered certain things that work and the things that don't work. See, our faith is to walk. It's not just to grow in the head. Our faith is practical because God is a practical God. So God doesn't give you steps to follow him. He deals with you. <laughs> God. He deals with you. So you can start out with the whole steps thing, doctrine, but then you, you begin to grow. And the more you know God, the more you drop some of those things. Like, ah, these things are just in the realms of men. Praise <laughs> God. So you grow up to that place where you begin to understand God for yourself. And you begin to relate with him for who he is. He speaks to you. <laughs> Praise God. He speaks to you. Anything you don't understand, you can take it to him. And he will tell you. So sometimes, I, I, this, this, this might upset some, you know, but then sometimes people go, if it is not written in the epistles, uh, then we have to be careful. Where did they get that from? It's not everything that is written in the epistles. Jesus never left us with epistles. He left us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. So when people begin to limit the same thing the Pharisees did, see, that's how they missed the Lord. They were trying to qualify Jesus with the writing of the scriptures. But the problem here was they didn't even understand the scriptures. You see that now? But Jesus came before their eyes. They crucified him because they were looking for him in the scriptures. And Jesus said that in Mark, John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40. He said, you search the scriptures. For in them you think 
you find eternal life. But these scriptures testify of me. Then he said something very striking. And you are not willing to come to me so that you will have life. Be careful when you do that doctrine thing too much. Be very careful. You might lead yourself out of Christ. Because the intention of Paul was never. He said, no man, no one man can say, this is how the church must function. <laughs> no. It takes all of us to understand what the church is. So be careful when you say all those things. Work more on your relationship with the Lord, your ability to hear the Lord and understand Him. That is the most important thing. Work more on your relationship with God and your ability to understand Him. So I was talking to you about John Mark, the, the writer of the book of Mark. He wasn't one of the disciples of Jesus. I mean, he was not one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. He got born again later on in Barnabas' ministry. And so he was a son of Barnabas. And so naturally, you want to, I mean, he's willing to go again, no matter what he's done before. But Apostle Paul wasn't ready for all that thing. I mean, this guy's going to leave us. He's not, he's not dependable. <laughs> that's what Apostle Paul thought. He's not dependable. He's going to leave us along the way. But Barnabas, they said, no. How do we train him if we don't take him along? Paul says, you know what? I don't think I'm up for that. And you see, to avoid strife, they decided to break up. And not because the Spirit of God told them to break up, but it, that whole John Mark situation was going to bring about strife. Because now when they go on, because Barnabas insisted that John Mark must come. So Barnabas is the inclusion one. Now look, you know what? I mean, this guy shown willingness. I've rebuked him. Let him just follow us. But Paul says, no. Remember that last time? I mean, we're banking on him. And then he troubled us and left us. But Barnabas insisted. And Paul says, no, what? Well, if you insist, then that, that, that's to tell you itself that the human factor always come in. Now, these were spiritual men whom one time they were praying. The word of the Lord came by prophecy. Separate me, Paul and Barnabas to the work where which I have called them to. So they laid, the apostles laid hands on them and the leaders in, in the church laid hands on them and released them to go. So now the word came for the two of them. But then along the line, um, they, they had to separate just to avoid strife. Now some people think after they separated, that was the end of Barnabas' ministry. But no. You see, that, those are the mistakes people make with the scriptures. Because you don't see the scriptures write much about Barnabas, you think that his ministry ended because now, so what would he have, what should he have done in that circumstance? Should he have dropped John Mark and said, okay, John, stay, let me and Paul go. And remember, and this is the truth, in that team, Barnabas was actually, if you want to follow seniority, even spiritually, spiritually, Barnabas was more of a leader than, more of the leader than Paul. Paul did much of the speaking. You see, and also understand this, that the writer of the book of Acts, where which we know or learn lots of things that Apostle Paul did, was Paul's person. Luke, the doctor, He's a, he was the writer, so he was on Paul's side. And because he was on Paul's side, naturally, he will write more of the things that he saw Paul do. He will write more on his perspective from Paul's angle. Now, not because he wanted to shut down Barnabas, but it's just natural. It's just natural in everything that we do. One who's closer to me, and then we, we go work with a group. He'll be more interested in writing the things, the parts that he sees from my own angle. It's just natural. So the fact that you don't see them reporting a lot of things that Barnabas did afterwards doesn't mean Barnabas... I've heard someone actually say that. I've heard someone say that, that Barnabas... You know, Barnabas was a lovely man. 
Praise God. Remember, he was the one that stood on Paul's behalf when, when they wanted to push Paul out. The church was unwilling to accept Paul. Because, I mean, this guy has been killing the saints. He's, he's been attacking us, arresting us, and putting us in prison. Now you are saying he's born again. Barnabas stood up and said, look, on my honor, this guy is a change now. I'm ready to walk with him. He went and fished Paul out and said, oh, come join. Come, let's go out for a walk. Let's go start some walk. Let's go do this thing. He brought him in. And that's the kind of person Barnabas was. He's the one who loved to do follow-up for the brethren. Barnabas was not just preach, 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 like some of us can be. <laughs> now, Barnabas will look out for the brethren. Barnabas was an encourager. And that's why they call him the son of consolation. He was an encourager. He will look out for everybody. He seeks for the welfare of everyone. Now, he doesn't, he, you, you may not hear him preach, but you hear him strengthen the brethren. Now, most likely, now this is me, this is my thoughts. Most likely, if he was still with Apostle Paul, I don't know why I'm even sharing this. You know, this is some good Bible study. Praise God. Most likely, if he was with Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul wouldn't have made the mistakes that he made. I believe so. You see, sometimes these things happen in ministry. You have people who were your trusted friends. And as God begins to expand you, you kind of um, disconnect from such people. And then you now start hanging around people who all call you, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, you see? And now the problem with such people is this. When you are falling into a pit, they may not even know to tell you. Or some will see the pit and believe that you know what you're doing. And you will fall into the pit. And I tell you the truth, if you've walked with God enough, you would know that there are certain things the Lord will not even talk to you about. Oh yes, he will not talk to you about it. And many have been destroyed because of things like this. So I believe, I said, this is my belief. Don't ask me where is it written in scriptures. Based on my understanding of the scriptures and life, I believe if Apostle Paul, if Barnabas and Apostle Paul were still together, Apostle Paul wouldn't have made the mistakes he made. Someone said, did Apostle Paul make any mistake? Yes, he did. He did. Most of the apostles, most of the epistles Apostle Paul wrote were from the prison. You know why he was in prison? Now you say he was in prison for preaching the gospel. No, he wasn't in prison for preaching the gospel. He was in prison for disobeying the Lord. And many people don't know or can't see that Apostle Paul disobeyed God. <laughs> Praise God. In his ministry, see, that's the thing. When you, when you prepare for ministry and you're, you're praying and, 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 and fasting and talking to the Lord, he gives you your borders. Yeah, he gives you your borders. And if you follow the commands of the Lord, there are some things he will tell you once. If you disobey them, even when you're disobeying them, he may not talk to you about it because he has already spoken to you clearly. That's why he said, let your ears incline to my saying. Observe what I'm saying to you. Pay attention to my words. If God tells you don't travel to that city, he might never talk to you about it again. But you know you've heard it. The, temp the day of temptation will come for whatever reason to go to that city. And when you want to go, you will remember the word of the Lord. But there will be a compelling reason in your heart to go. And many have actually died that way. Thank God Apostle Paul didn't die. But Apostle Paul, you see, God specifically told him, don't go to Jerusalem. God told him that. Some people don't realize God told him that. When did God tell him not to? From the beginning of his ministry, he wanted to go to Jerusalem. God said, no, don't go. See, he told him, they will not receive your testimony concerning me there. Meaning it was Jesus himself that told him, don't go to Jerusalem. Another time God told him, look, I'm going to send you far away to the Gentiles. So suddenly, Paul began to have this burden because I tell you the truth, no matter how anointed you, I was telling you this yesterday, Satan is never scared of your anointing. No matter the anointing you carry, Satan will be looking for how to trap you. 
He'll be looking for how to trap you. That's exactly what he did to Apostle Paul. Now, he couldn't get Apostle Paul through sinning like adultery and all those things. So, he actually tempted Paul with his passion. He tempted Paul with his passion. Look, go to Jerusalem. Your people are there. You see, you're, you're busy preaching everywhere. Your people are in, 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 in Jerusalem. Your the Jews in Jerusalem. Who's preaching to them like you do? Can't you see that you know the gospel more than the more than every other person there that, that, that will preach to them? And then Paul began to express his concern. Oh, I wish my people would be saved. I wish my people... Who will save them? You? All the Lord Jesus. So he began to have this affection or passion to go to Jerusalem. And then he set out on that journey. And many believers began to warn him. But he see the mistake. And that's the same mistake a lot of preachers make. I believe Apostle Paul was waiting for the Lord to speak to him about it. But the Lord will not speak to you about it. He has spoken once. Now he spoke to you. And you know what he told you. Then you set out on this journey. And someone who was not there when the Lord spoke to you shows up and say, I don't think you should do this thing. The Spirit of God is not, I, I, have a, I have a bad feeling about this thing you're about to do. Why don't you pause? What is that? That's reminding you that remember what God said to you. What did David say? Once he has spoken, twice I have heard. But then you're waiting say, if God does not want me to go, he will tell me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He will be quiet. And you know the story. The brethren warned him. He said, look, you guys stop it. Then he got to this house of um, 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 when Agabus came to meet him. And you know the story. Agabus took his ghetto, tied his hands and his legs and, and said, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bound the owner of these things and hand him over to the Gentiles. See that, see that prophecy? Very deep prophecy. Now, who was Agabus speaking by? Agabus was speaking by the Holy Ghost. Yet, he didn't say, don't go. Why? Because God has already told Apostle Paul long ago, I'm not calling you to this place. I pray someone is learning from it. But he says, look, even the brethren, like they took him aside and said, Brother Paul, please listen to this. I think the Lord is warning you. He said, look, stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm ready to die. Okay. He left. He got there. And guess what? He got to Jerusalem and didn't even preach the gospel to one soul. He didn't preach the gospel to one soul. You know the story? He was caught. There was an uproar. The Roman soldiers came. They carried him. And that was it. He began to live from prison to prison to prison until he was shipped out to Rome. And if you notice, if you're a good student of scripture, if you're observant, all that while he was in Jerusalem, there was not one record of having an encounter with God or God visiting him. Not one. When his life was at stake, he took a little boy to come and reveal the plans that the Jews had to him. It wasn't by revelation of the Holy Ghost. But the moment Paul was taken out of Jerusalem on his way to Rome, when they were about to enter, have a shipwreck, that's the first time you hear the angel of the Lord stood beside him and said, be not afraid. Now, because he had entered his jurisdiction. I pray someone learns from this. I don't even know why I shared these things. But you see, okay, I was talking about the fact that we do not hear, or we didn't hear much about Barnabas doesn't mean his ministry ended. Else you want to say the ministry of um, Bartholomew and the other 11 apostles. You want to say that their ministry ended too. Nah, everything was not written for us. The Bible that we have does not contain everything. You should know that by now. I mean, that's common sense. Imagine if the Bible should contain all the letters everybody wrote. <laughs> 
John, even John said, only Jesus, the thing Jesus did, if they should write all of them, the world will not contain the book that will be written. So there are many, many writings that are available. But then we shy away from such things because, you know, it is not in the Bible. Okay. Do you know the history of the Bible? That's another day stuff. Praise God. Woo. This thing, we didn't even open the chapter and the verse we're supposed to read. But I believe you have been blessed today. And I pray for you that the Spirit of God will give you stability in your mind. That your eyes will be fixed on God for who he truly is. And you will enjoy his goodness and his presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.